What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we wanna add the answer entry field to our flashcard app with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna work on the answer form for our flashcard app. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we want to work on our answer form. So, you know, we could type in a, an answer, Illinois, did I spell that right? Correct, have a little output, and then go from there. So, all right, in the last video, we just had our states function that just randomized our thing, put it up on the screen. We have this next button here that we really don't need anymore. So we'll probably get rid of that as it just, you know, cycles through. Maybe we'll keep it up and, and we'll, instead of next date, let's change it to pass, <laughs> All right? Like pass, I don't know the answer, pass, give me the next card. Uh, maybe we'll keep that, uh, but otherwise we need to change this around. So first things first, we need a, an entry box. So let's call this answer, input, I don't know, and it's an entry box, and we're gonna put it in our state frame. And let's give this a font of a Helvetica, and let's change it to like size 18, just to make it a little bit bigger. And let's go answer input dot pack. And we wanna give this a pad Y of 15 or so, just to smush it down a little bit. And we might wanna put well, let's create a comment that says uh, create answer input box. And let's go ahead and copy this button and put it underneath this box just to make it look nicer. And then we also need to create a button to answer the question. So let's go ahead and call this, I don't know, our answer button. <laughs> And that's a button and we want to put it in our state frame and we want the text to equal, I don't know, answer for now. We want the command to equal what? Well, we need to run a function that checks to see whether our answer is right or not. So I'm just going to call this state answer for now. I'll copy this because we need to make this function. And let's go ahead and answer underscore button dot pack and give this a pad Y of, I don't know, five or so. Just mush it down a little bit. So we're probably going to be using this answer input other places. So let's go ahead and make this global. Answer input. And that's probably fine. Now below this button, let's uh, create a label to tell us if we got the answer right or not, right? So let's call this answer label. And it's a label. And we want to put it in our state frame and we want the text to equal nothing for now. And let's just go answer underscore label and give this a pad Y of 15 to smush it down a little bit. And we might want to give this a font of, well, so we would do this up here, font equals what? Let's go Helvetica and give this a size of, I don't know, 18 or so. Okay, now again, this we're probably gonna wanna use other places as well, so let's make this a global. Okay, go ahead and save that. So now we've got sort of the framework here, we've got our button here. And we're calling, whenever we press the button, we're calling state answer. And so we need to create that function. So let's come up here and create uh, answer function. And let's call it state answer. Okay. So before we get into all the logic and stuff, let's just print out onto the screen what our answer is, right? So we can just go answer underscore label that we just created dot config and then set the text equal to what? 
Well, let's go, let's see, where is our input box answer input, we called it. Let's just get that just for now and just put this on the screen and just to make sure this is all working. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and let's head over here and run our flashcards.py. So we'll go to geography, we see states, this is Kentucky. Uh-oh, we probably need to make this bigger and also our button, did I forget to pack the button? Uh, answer button. <laughs> so yeah, okay, so first things first, let's make this bigger so this all fits on there. And then let's see, answer button, answer button, there we go. Uh, yeah, that looks better. So <laughs> all right, let's save this and let's run this guy again. So, okay, states, pass. <laughs> uh, let's go Illinois, answer Illinois. So we're just passing in the thing that we, we entered for now. Now here's something interesting. Let's go back, see, notice I, I capitalized Illinois, but when we start to look at the logic of deciding whether or not our answer is correct or not, we need to be able to match it up to whatever this was, right? So these are all lowercase. So our answer needs to be lowercase. So we can just do that by calling a dot lower on here and it's a function. So we just slap that onto our answer input. So let's save this and run it just to see if that worked. Should, you never know what get. So I'm gonna type in John, capital J, click my answer. Now it's outputting lowercase John. So it's converted everything I typed into lowercase. So, okay, that's good. We've got another problem too. So for an instance, let's see if we can find it here. Oh, I just went past it. New York is two letters, or two words, New York, right? So if we hit our answer, New York, two words. But if we come back to our code and we look in our list, we've got it listed as New York. So if we compare New York with two words to that New York with one, that's also gonna be a problem. So what we really need to do is also convert strip out any white spaces in there. So we can do that pretty easy with string replace. We can just go, well, let's create a variable. Let's call it answer. And it answer equals, let's put it as our answer underscore input dot get. So now we've got that. Now we can go answer equals answer dot replace. And then we can pass in what we want to replace that with that, right? Then we can come in here and let's just output our answer, but make sure it's, it's lowercase. So let's save that to make sure that worked as well. Run this again. So I'm just gonna type in New York, click my answer, it outputs New York under, or both of these are lowercase and uh, all the space is gone. So, okay, that's good. If we, if we do more than one thing, it strips out all of the spaces and we're good to go there. So, okay, that's good. What next? Well, now we need to determine whether or not our answer is the correct answer, right? So what is the correct answer? Well, if we look down here in right here, this is the actual answer, our state's rando. Because remember, we're generating a random number, say three, and then we're calling the three the third item of our list here. So zero, one, two, three, that would be Kentucky. So we need to make sure our answer, Kentucky, equals the actual answer, Kentucky. So we could just do a basic if statement on this. So let's come back up here and let's do that. Let's go uh, determine if our answer is right or wrong, right? So if answer, dot lower equals our states dot rando. Uh, let's go correct for now, else incorrect, right? So what we wanna do is now probably create a new variable and let's call, what do we wanna call it? Not answer, but response, I don't know. Response equals, let's just go correct for now else response equals incorrect, right? And then down here, let's just output out instead of the answer that we typed in, let's just, answer, let's just 
output response. All right, so let's save this and run it, see if that worked. Okay, so states, and I'm gonna type in capital California, and then answer. Uh oh, got a problem. What I forget? Our states is not defined. Ah, okay, so our states is we're getting that from down here, but this needs to be global. Okay, so let's save that. That should work now. Run this guy. Boom, states. Uh, pass. <laughs> All right, so Oregon. Answer. Oh, another error. What do we do? Rando is not defined. All right, so Rando needs to be global. Okay. Try this again. Geography, states, Illinois. Correct. Now, we would like this to auto update to the next one whenever we click the answer button. But for now, we can just click pass and then we can try, let's try Florida, lowercase. Correct. Pass. Uh, Nevada, all uppercase. Answer correct. Uh, Maine. Incorrect. All right, so that seems to be working. Let's cycle through to New York. Oh, there it was. There we go. Come back. There we go. And let's type in New York, uppercase with a space. Answer correct. All right, so that seems to be working and uh, very cool. Now we just need to kind of update this picture whenever we click the answer button so we don't have to click this pass button every time because that's kind of annoying. And I think this video is getting a little bit long and it's Friday. I want to keep going on a Friday, right? <laughs> so I think we'll pick this up in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 90,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.